Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of Smarter by the Second by Abacus. Uh, today is the 13th of April 2021, and today, uh, a bit over 800 years ago, namely in the year 1204, the sack of Constantinople uh, happened. And the question to you guys at home is, to the crusaders of which crusade did Constantinople fail, temporarily ending the Byzantine Empire? So please uh, leave your answers in chat and uh, we will find out who has the most knowledge of all the viewers. But today we're going to find out all about the knowledge of Sam Geerts, uh, who is joining us uh, here today. How are you, Sam? Yeah, yeah, fine. Doing good. Looking forward to it. So, uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, what have you uh, done uh, in the association Abacus? Um, so, I've been a member of the Pixie, where we took photographs. I've been a member of the Ideal and also of the Twicken uh, as committees. And right now I'm a member of the uh, advisory council. That's mostly it, yeah. Quite an active member. And if I'm correct, you're also quite active outside of the association, namely at the uh, Sodar boat. Uh, yeah, yeah, so last year I uh, had a gap year when I was done with my bachelor's. Um, I joined Solar boat for a year where I worked on the electronics and uh, software. Um, and then after that, I continued with my master, but I'm still somewhat involved in Solar Boat with helping and advising uh, this year as well. Yeah. Oh, good to hear. And uh, today you chose the category science. So uh, why this is this an obvious choice for you? Um, oh, I'm not sure. Maybe geography would be my better part, but um, I think that science is interesting, and I think uh, it would suit me well because I'm interested in a lot of subjects. Um, um, so we'll see how it goes, but I'm, I'm just looking forward to it. I'm quite excited. Yeah. So uh, did you do anything to prepare for today? Yeah, I, I uh, read through about a hundred Wikipedia pages and uh, <laughs> I think I'm well prepared. Yeah. So you watched <laughs> the, the, the previous, uh, episode as well for, with Dan Bluister. I did, I did. So then I, I know a little bit of what to expect, but of course. Yeah, science is so broad that you don't really know what you expect either. So, yeah, for the people watching, if you uh, missed the first episode, you can watch it on our YouTube uh, page. So, uh, let me explain now what we are going to do today. Uh, we will do uh, four rounds today, and in each round, you will get nine answers on screen. Then I will ask a question or show a photo, and you have to say the corresponding answer. And in the first round, you need five good answers, in the second, six, and in the third, seven, and in the last one, you need all of them to be correct. And during this round, your time will be ticking, and you start off with 300 seconds. Uh, but you don't have to do this all by yourself. Uh, you get three lifelines in the beginning, previously called jokers, but we uh, did not really like the, the name. And once used uh, per lifeline, one false answer will be counted as right. But this will cost you 16 seconds of your clock. And every round that is completely correct, you will uh, regain an extra lifeline. And if you have survived the first three rounds, then you will receive an, the amazing prize of one speculaas to Londo. And if you are feeling confident after that and you have enough time and lifelines left, you can choose to play the fourth round. And all answers here need to be right. But if you succeed, you will double your prize and you get two of the rondos. But if you fail, you're only getting the participation trophy of a, a, a clock. So without further ado, uh, let's go into the first round. And I think uh, this round uh, might suit you well, uh, as this is about mathematics and formulas. So the Pythagoreans discovered that the diagonal of a square is incommensurable with its side, or as we should say nowadays, the square root of two is irrational. For a while, this was treated as a secret, and according to legend of one of the Pythagoreans, the passage of uh, Vita Pantum, was murdered for disclosing it. So here are nine mathemati uh, mathematicians and their formulas. So we, uh, we will show a picture with the formula and I will not say anything about it and you have to tell me uh, which name corresponds to the formula on screen. Okay, let's do it. So good luck. Uh, Pythagoras. Uh, L'Hopital. Uh, Euler. Uh, 
The mob? No, 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 the previous one was the mob right away. Uh, 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 earlier. Uh, Bernoulli. This is... Newton. I uh, fucked it up. This is Bern. <laughs> this is Bernoulli. I don't know this one. Uh, pick. Newton. And you have two left. Yeah, the one with the integral that was uh green. And uh, Coulomb was the one I said Newton, the the, the V minus E plus uh, plus two thingy. Uh, stop the time. All right. So there have to be five correct answers. So now you can count whether you want to use any lifelines. Um. There are five correct, and we will move on to the next uh, round. Yeah, I don't think I need one. All right, so then we. Yeah, I don't think so. No, let's just do it. The confident man. So we'll start off with the first one. This is the easy one. Formula for calculating lengths of the sides of a right triangle, and it's of course by by Vergeros. So that's the first one correct. And the equation used to calculate limits of fractions is, of course, L'Hopital. And the uh, equation is important because of its connection between trigonomet trigonometry and complex numbers. This is the Mafra. Very well corrected. This equation is a special two dimensional case of Stokes' theorem by George Green. You learn about it in the third module. I think all the freshmen are uh, quite happy to see that one go. And then the formula to describe the algebraic expansion of a binomial, that's Newton's binomial. So that's your first wrong. So you're not quite sure uh, whether you make the second round or not. Then this is the polyhedron formula, which relates the number of faces, edges, and vertices of any convex polyhedron. It's by Euler. And then the next one, is the equation that describes fluid flow. This is indeed by Bernoulli, and that makes you safe to go move on to the next round. And then this formula can be used to calculate the area of a polygon on a grid with integer vertex coordinates. And this one you have correct also, it's by George Pick. Oh, no and the last you. one, <laughs> uh, so the formula describes the force to charges experience when they are in close vicinity is by Coulomb. So you got a few of them mix, uh, mixed up, but there are six correct, so that means we'll move on to the next uh, question. So there it is. This round is called the Accidental Discoveries. In 1964, Peter Higgs predicted the existence of a small particle, and after first looking for five years with the LVP collider, and then eight more years uh, of looking with the Large Hadron Collider, on 4th of July 20, uh, 2012, the Higgs boson particle had been discovered. With several scientists predicting the existence and 13 years of looking, the discovery was definitely not an accident. But in this round, we will see nine accidental discoveries. And who discovered it, when was it discovered, and a small description of the discovery is what I will say about it. And then you have uh, to say the, uh, the thing that was discovered. All right, so as uh, possible answers, we have uh, penicillin, the microwave oven, Velcro, Teflon, radioactivity, insulin, vulcanization, superglue, and x-rays. 
So how are you feeling about this one? Um, not too confident because I don't know the names of the person that, that discovered them, but we'll see. But I will the also descri describe the... Yeah, the, the description will do. Yeah. All right. So then uh, we can start the round. Discovered in 1928 by Alexander Fleming, when one of those Petri dishes with flu got contaminated by... Uh, a mold. Then discovered in 1945 by Percy Spencer, he was working on a radar when standing too close to one of the other machines he noticed his candy bar had melted. Uh, microwave oven. Then discovered in 1941 by George the Mistral, he went for a walk with his dogs when he noticed some bird rock seeds clinging to his coat and dog. Velcro. Discovered in 1938 by Roy J. Plunkett, while trying to make a refrigerant at Dupont, his bottle tetrafluorethylene got a weird slippery coating on the inside. Teflon. Discovered in 1896 by Henry Becquerel, while trying to find a relation between phosphorescence and x-rays using different phosphorescent salts, among which uranium salts. Uh, vulcanization. Discovered in 1889 by Oskar Minkowski and Joseph von Meering, when trying to figure out the role of pancreas in digesting by removing it from a healthy dog. Discovered in 1839 by Charles Goodyear, while trying to mix rubber with sulfur, he accidentally dropped the mixture in a hot frying pan. Uh, organization. Discovered in 1942 by Harry Coover Jr. In his search for suitable materials for clear plastic gun sites, he accidentally found a very sticky material. Superglue. Discovered in 1895 by Wilhelm Röntgen, while experimenting with Leonard and Crookes tubes, he found a new type of radiation. Um, X-rays. And then the first vulcanization was radioactivity. So now there have to be six right, and then you move on to the third round. Um, yeah, given the time, I will not use any lifelines. We'll see. You still have 100 seconds left, so if you want to do only the, the first three rounds, you're completely on track. Exactly. All right, then we'll <laughs> move on to checking uh, the answers. So the first one was Alexander Fleming, when one of his petri dishes with flu got contaminated by a mold. He took some time to examine it, and he found it had an antibacterial effect. And this is penicillin. So that's the first one right. The next one was Perry Spencer working on a rubber. A radar, he led his candy bar too close and it had melted and just discovering the microwave oven. And 1941 by George de Mestral, he went for a walk with his dogs and he noticed something clinging to his coat and to his dog. And this is, of course, Velcro. Then in 1938 by Roy J. Plunkett, while trying to make a refrigerant, his bottle tetrafluoroethylene got a weird slippery coating on the inside, just Teflon. So all uh, right uh, to this point. And then Henry Becquerel, while trying to find a relation between phosphorescence and x-rays, uh, he tried some salts, among which uranium salts, thus discovering radioactivity. And when in 1889 by Oscar Minkowski and Joseph von Meering, they were, uh, Trying to figure out the role of the pancreas, they removed it from a healthy dog and they found out they had given the dog diabetes. This is about insulin. So this is the sixth one correct, so uh, congratulations, we will uh, move on to the third round. But we still have some answers to check. Then discovered in 1839 by Charles Goodyear, while trying to mix rubber with silver, he accidentally dropped a mixture in a hot frying pan. So it's vulcanization, it's the process of... Uh, enhancing uh, rubber. So when Harry Coover Jr. was in search for suitable materials for clear, uh, clear plastic gun sites, he accidentally found a very sticky material, thus discovering superglue. And then discovered in 1895 by Wilhelm Röntgen, while experimenting with Leonard and Crookes tubes, he found a new type of radiation. And this was the last one. So. That was all of them right. So you also get a, a new lifeline. So now we move on to the third round. And this round uh, is 
the biology round and it's about the nice. uh, balance Alliance. how do you pronounce this word i'm not sure sorry it's about that so here uh we will show a picture feline i'm sorry i just heard from the production crew that's pronounced feline <laughs> so here we will show a, a picture and i will give a, a short description about the animal as well you have to tell me what animal is this so the possible answers are the bengal tiger the Eurasian lynx, an ocelot, a cougar, a jaguar, a jaguar, an Andean mountain cat, a sand cat, snow leopard, and an Asian golden cat. So is biology also one of your preferred sciences? or? Uh... Um, yeah, biology is, but cats aren't. I'm more a uh, dog person. <laughs> But yeah, I think luck. I know most of them. Good luck anyways. You need uh, seven of them to uh, to get your prize. You still have 100 seconds left. All right, so we start the round. This is a wildcat native. Then a wildcat that can be found in Scandinavia, uh, Siberia. A small cat that inhabits deserts far from water sources. This cat is been classified as near threatened due to the hunting pressure or rapid habitat loss due to rapid default. Uh, Indian mountain cat. Native to the Americas. It is most widespread of any large well terrestrial mammal in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, Coomer. Of this genus, there's only one species Jaguar. left. Which, a large cat native to uh, the mountain no regions in Central. This feline is native Nickel to the tiger. Indian subcontinent. A small wild cat na uh, native to the high Andes. It has been listed as endangered. Indian mountain cat. And then the other one was the Asian golden cat. Stop the time. This one went uh, a bit faster. Yeah. <laughs> More my subject. So you need seven of them. Yeah, I got it. I don't need a lifeline. Yeah, you can, because uh, it costs you 16 seconds, so you can use uh, two lifelines if you, you would like to. Or oh, are you uh, um, keeping those 45 seconds uh, for the fourth round? Yeah, that would be too much, uh, too little, so uh, let's use two lifelines in that case. But... Right, so then we move on to uh, checking the answer, so you have used two lifelines, so that means you only need five uh, correct answers. So this is the first one. It's a wildcat native to parts in North and South America, and this is the ocelot. Then with the pointy ears, this is the wildcat that can be found in Scandinavia, Siberia, and the high uh, Himalayas. It can be found up to 5,500 meters high. It's the Eurasian lynx. And a small cat that inhabits deserts far from water sources. Most of them can be found in Northern Africa. It's the sand cat. This cat has been classified as near threatened due to hunting pressure and rapid habitat loss due to rapid deforestation. And this is the Asian golden cat. And then native to the Americas, it is the most widespread of any large wild terrestrial mammal in the Western Hemisphere. It's the cougar. And because you've used two lifelines, uh, I uh, can congratulate <laughs> you with uh, winning this round as well. Thanks. Then of this genus, there's only one species left, which is native to the Americas, and it's the jaguar. And a large cat native to the mountain ranges of Central and South Asia, it is listed as vulnerable on the IUCN red list, it's the snow leopard. And this feline is native to the Indian subcontinent. Noticeable is that the species as shown here is mainly known for its white fur, but only a small portion has the white fur. It has been listed in the uh, in the IUCN list as well as endangered. It's the Bengal tiger. And the last one is a small wildcat native to the high Andes. It has been listed as endangered in the Indian mountain cat. So uh, you were correct. You uh, didn't need any lifelines at all. All of them were correct. 
So uh, yeah, but um, yeah, forty-five seconds was too little for the fourth round anyway. So uh, yeah, for future uh, contenders, you have to really speed up in those first rounds as well. If you uh, had all the other rounds as well within fifty seconds, you would have uh, way over one hundred seconds uh, for the fourth round. <laughs> Yeah, true. So then uh, you will receive, besides the participation uh, award that's a clock, you will also get a, a speculas, the rondo, or any other cookie by choice of the Tabacus room. Very nice. And I will make cool. sure you get the prize. Thanks. Uh, all right, then on to the viewers' question. Let's see what is actually the answer. Answer was never. Give to me the question was uh, to the crusaders of which crusade did Constantinople fell temporarily yeah, ending the Byzantine <laughs> Empire? So, what was the answer? I'm right now asking the production crew, which is or is Jorgen Lavinia from Dab Axi. They are doing all the hard work behind the. In this, Uh, I think uh, they say the rest of the stream already heard the answer given by uh, Lavinia, if I'm correct. So, uh, Sam, thank you for participating. And, uh, yeah, thanks for organizing. It was, it was a lot of fun. And uh, next week, uh, we got uh, Nico here. And he is uh, also doing uh, geography as a category, same as last week. So uh, we will see you hopefully next Tuesday as well. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.